from the University of Birmingham. We've got Jack Groves, um, Adam Mountford, and unfortunately, Anne Shapiro is unable to join us for the presentation today. Uh, but Alison Breen, one of their colleagues, has very kindly stepped in to take over uh, the duties of, of, from her. So the presentation is called Supporting Collaboration, Supporting Learners, Integrating a Language Support Team into the Online Learning Environment. So without further ado, I present to you the next presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, as Craig just mentioned, there's the title of our talk today. Um, so it's about how we've integrated a language support team into an online uh, learning environment. And as uh, Craig mentioned, my colleague Anne unfortunately can't be with us today, uh, which is a great shame because Anne's been instrumental in creating this language support program over the last few years. Um, but I do have with me uh, two of the teachers uh, who worked with us over the summer, Adam and Ali. Uh, my role was as a coordinator and we thought during this presentation we'll be able to offer you both a coordination perspective and hopefully a teaching perspective as well. Uh, Adam, are you there? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, so yeah, so I'm Adam and this summer I worked on the university's 15-week uh, uh, pre-sessional program as a, a language support tutor. It was delivered entirely online this summer um, as, uh, as with many uh, sort of universities across the world. Um, and I also worked on the same program uh, last summer when it was on campus. Um, so I've been able to sort of gauge uh, some of the similarities and differences between the two provisions um, along with my colleague Ali. Yeah, hi everybody, I'm Ali. Uh, the same as Adam, I was also a language support tutor this year and last year on the 15 week program. Um, yeah, and hopefully will be again next year, either face to face or online. Yeah, so just a few uh, house rules. Please kindly remain on mute. I think everyone has uh, done so far this weekend anyway. But please do feel free to add any uh, questions or comments to the chat box. Um, because there are three of us speaking today, we'll, we'll try to address those live during the conference, um, during the talk. Um, but if we don't, there will be an opportunity for, for spoken questions at the end as well. Okay, so the, the purpose of our session today is, is to first of all outline our Angli uh, language support program. Um, for, from conversations I've had with people on other pre-sessionals, it seems that uh, not many universities have such a thing as a language support program or a language support teacher role. So we'll explain what that entails. Um, and we'll talk about some of the successes we've had and the challenges we've faced. And uh, we'd like to propose that this online environment that we've moved into can have both positive implications for CPD and uh, the observation process and how, how we've had successes in those areas this summer. Uh, we also want to talk about the importance of creating a collaborative uh, supporting team kind of environment. And that's something that we've really tried to do in our language support team. Uh, we also want to mention that team teaching or team delivery can be beneficial. And that's hopefully what we'll try and demonstrate in the fact we have uh, three speakers today. And these are the key terms. So before we get started, just a word about our context. So we're at the Birmingham International Academy at the University of Birmingham. And our online, um, our pre-sessional program moved online this year and we was taught through Zoom. Uh, we had various lengths of courses for uh, postgraduates, undergraduates, and specifically business students. And we had a total of 1,051 students this year along with 128 teachers, of which 41 of them were language support teachers. So this uh, number is, is quite big, it's a little bit down on previous years, but still it's a large pre-sessional. Um, and the way we decided to organize the, the teaching this year was that we'd have three hours of live teaching in the morning, and then there would be additional um, language support activities that students could attend. 
in, as well as asynchronous activities. So here's um, the, the structure for today's presentation. So I've just given you a bit of background and now we're going to move on to outline what the language support role is and the rationale behind it. We'll then move on to look at some successes, challenges and, and recap on our main points at the end. So this year, the language support teachers had four main roles and responsibilities. The first one was to provide in-class support to the class teachers. So language support teachers don't have their own specific class. They're working alongside the class teachers. Uh, they also provide one-to-one -one or small group tuition to students who are identified as needing extra support. So this takes place outside of the regular day-to-day -day classes and is in addition, specifically for the weaker students. Um, the third thing that we've been doing this year are what we call enrichment hour sessions. And these run every day between 12 and one o'clock and are various uh, workshops and activities designed to help our students. Finally, um, the LSTs provide cover uh, in the case of emergencies or planned um, cover when class teachers are gonna be away. So I will now outline and go into a bit more detail about each of these four different aspects of the language support role. Yeah, so uh, to start with um, the in-class support to class teachers, I think it's fair to say that the main idea behind, uh, behind this is that three hours of live teaching every day, five days a week, um, whilst having its benefits, could also be a bit tiring, a bit challenging for both the teachers and the students. So just having that extra face, that extra teacher come to the class every day for 45 minutes, one hour, just hopefully um, help to vary the pace a little bit break up the lesson a little bit and of course offer new perspectives and um, certainly in the earlier stages of this summer's pre-sessional when uh, teaching online was new to the vast majority of us and the potential for tech and connection problems also meant that having that extra teacher on hand to help out to share ideas uh, and to even take over um, for a time if the, if the main class teacher lost connection or had technology issues uh, was another uh, reason behind it. Um, so the way it ran this summer was that each language support tutor had three class teachers. So on a typical day, I would visit three separate classes in the morning between sort of 30 to 60 minutes uh, for each class. Yeah, and then one of the other main purposes of language support that's been in place for a few years now is seeing students on a one-to-one -one basis or small groups um, that have been identified as struggling or maybe weaker in a particular aspect of their English language learning. Um, so in the past, students were identified and referred by the class teacher, um, and that was still the case this year, but because we now had the LST in the class with the teacher as well, the LSTs were also able to help identify and refer these students as well. So once referred, the student would be contacted by us and we would arrange to have some sessions with them. These sessions were around 25 minutes and we generally had a guideline of doing five sessions with each student. Um, this could be more if we deemed the student needed it um, and if the LST had room in their timetable for it, we might have done a few more sessions, but five was generally the initial guideline. And by having this set session, five session uh, structure, it meant that we could set smart targets and that were very focused on the specific issue um, and that were very goal driven and focused as well. So when teachers made these referrals, we asked that they be as detailed and specific as possible so that they didn't just say, oh, they need help with their writing. It was more like they need help writing introductions or topic sentences and we could then make these five sessions have a product at the end that maybe resulted in the student writing a paragraph or an introduction with a thesis statement that was clear or something like this. And this encouraged the students to then be involved in their learning and be more independent moving forward so that we weren't necessarily 
saying that in five sessions you're going to be amazing at writing topic sentences or thesis statements, but we were giving them the tools and the methods in order to be able to do this and replicate it in future. And then the, the third main component of the language support team uh, was the enrichment hour. So this was um, uh, a optional, uh, non-compulsory uh, extra hour of live teaching provided every day, uh, scheduled 12 to 1 p.m. UK time. Um, and each day had a slightly different slant. So on Mondays and Thursdays, we ran uh, a workshop which usually had uh, some kind of academic skill as its focus, perhaps taking notes during uh, a lecture or how to prepare um, a solid introductory paragraph to an essay. Uh, Tuesdays was time for Tuesday Talks, which was um, quite well received by many students as simply an opportunity for conversation practice. Uh, Wednesdays had a focus on language skills. And then each Friday as well in this enrichment hour slot, we ran a Friday social in conjunction with the uh, international student support team. Um, again, in terms of how this was run, um, usually one or two language support tutors out of the team of approximately 40 would be allocated uh, an enrichment hour session throughout the, the summer pre-sessional. So this usually meant that you perhaps would take the lead, so to speak, maybe once every two weeks, perhaps on average, um, to, to prepare the materials and then run this lesson uh, or this, this enrichment hour session. So it involved working together with another language support teacher, uh, speaking with Jake and Anne, uh, seeking support from the, the CPD team at the university as well. So from a personal professional point of view, it was a really good opportunity to get involved with materials production as well. Um, and then how it worked for the students was we would usually have one very large session, much like this uh, Zoom session uh, currently, uh, to introduce the task and the topic for the, for the enrichment hour session, and then set some activities which the students would complete in breakout rooms. And they would intermittently complete tasks in breakout rooms and return to the main room um, for, for feedback. So a typical timetable um, would look like this. Yeah, this, we just want to give you an example of what the students were doing each day. So as we said, they're in class for three hours every morning. Um, this is in UK time here. Uh, so the students in China and Japan were having afternoon and evening classes. Um, they would have a break after the live sessions and then had the optional enrichment hour. Um, for a more detailed example of what our timetable looked like each week. So we would divide our time between the teachers that we were supporting. Um, we would agree that in advance with the teachers when we were going to come to their classes. And as Adam said, we might lead some of the sessions or just provide support. Um, then we would have a break or prepare for the workshop if we were leading. And then we would have the enrichment hours where we would go and support or lead in those, but everyone would be in attendance. Um, then after the workshops and Tuesday talks and focus sessions, we would have our one-to-ones and generally we would just schedule these with the students in these gaps around the meetings that occurred every week. Um, so yeah, we, we had this extra um, part of our timetable this year that we didn't have last year, which was the in-class support that we now scheduled in each week. Um, last year we had some feedback that some LSTs felt like they were underutilized and this was kind of in response to that as well that we were now able to provide that extra support and really engage more with what the students were doing on their timetabled live lessons and that really for me helped inform my one-to-ones and the enrichment hour focus as well. So uh Moving on, what we'll do next is just try to outline some, some main uh, successes um, from this summer before looking at some challenges a bit later as well. Um, so to start with, in terms of in-class support, um, despite some, some challenges, um, which we'll, we'll talk about a bit later, generally uh, the responses from a survey at the end of the pre-sessional were, were, were positive, um, which was, was really good to see. And, I know from a, a personal point of view, um, speaking to, to, to the class teachers who I saw every day, um, 
it was just very useful to have that extra teacher come along to, to take the lead for a little bit. So three hours of live teaching, uh, as I say, you might end up after two, two and a half hours having various windows open on your screen. You know, perhaps you might want to prepare or just check the next activity with your, with your class materials. So just having that extra person on hand for, for a little bit, even if it's just half an hour every day, uh, seemed to be really, really well received by a lot of the class teachers and just gave everybody a bit of, a bit of breathing space. And, uh, and as I say, it was hopefully beneficial to the students as well and, and helped build up this community at the university rather than being quite isolated with the same, um, the same students and teacher every day. Um, so in terms of one-to-one uh, -one support, um, as you can see, uh, almost half of, of, the, of the total cohort of students this year were seen for one-to-one for -one support. And, um, uh, you know, it reached the stage where towards the sort of end of the pre-session or despite these one-to-one -one sessions, uh, just because of you know, um, constraints with, with time and resources and the number of teachers, despite these sessions being focused uh, mainly uh, on those students who, who really needed that extra support in order to, to, to succeed in the pre-sessional, we ended up having you know, some students saying to, to, to the LSTs and to the class teachers, can I, can I have some one-to-one -one support, please? And almost referring themselves. So that was, that was really nice to, to see. Um, enrichment hour. Uh, likewise, um, last year when I was on uh, the pre-sessional, um, on campus uh, running the pre-sessional, we also had similar sessions. And this year the attendance was almost certainly higher. Uh, I think that's, um, as we perhaps probably all know now, one of the, one of the benefits of, of this uh, living in cyberspace or, or uh, teaching online is that we can just Zoom to the next classroom or the next meeting rather than having to sort of trek half a mile across quite a big university campus to find the next lecture theatre. So it was really good to see these high attendances every day. And as I say, at the peak of the pre-sessional, a typical daily attendance could be around 150 students. Um, so all coming together in, in this one uh, main room, uh, main Zoom room, and then going into smaller breakout rooms. And I think from a social point of view, many of the students really appreciated that as well. And I think a common theme running through a lot of these successes is that I think hopefully what we tried to do is build more of a sense of community. So rather than being in your class with 14 or 15 other students and your class teacher, you had these extra opportunities to, to meet other students and perhaps even meet some students who are going to be on, on your, your major, on your course you start. Um, yeah, so there's a nice quote here on the screen, for example. Um, I like the enrichment hour because I had the opportunity to practice with other students outside my class. So from a student point of view, that, that really seemed to be appreciated and hopefully went some way towards providing a substitute for, for the, the typical on-campus experience, which they, they would have otherwise uh, received. Um, yeah, and so Jake, from, from your perspective, how was the, the cover this year? Yes, yeah, so, so cover was a, a much easier to deal with this year. In previous years, um, Anne or myself had uh, the cover phone where, um, you know, we, we'd often get a call at, you know, 6.30 in the morning saying, oh, I can't come in. And then we'd have to kind of call one of the language support teachers and ask for them to, you know, could, could you cover this class this morning? And it, it worked okay. But this year, I think it was much easier because, the, the cover teacher, uh, sorry, if the class teacher was going to be absent, they could contact their LST who was already familiar with the class and the teaching materials and the students. And, and, and so if, if cover was required, I think it was less daunting for LSTs to go into the class they're already familiar with. Um, and it was much easier from a coordination uh, perspective because, you know, the, 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 the class teachers knew who they should go to and they would CC us into any communications, but you know, it, 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 it ran much uh, more smoothly, I feel, this year. And, and from the feedback survey, um, you know, the statistics show that the teachers who did require cover were, were very pleased with it. Yeah, so uh, in terms of some, some further successes to take away from this summer, um, in a, a study carried out this year about enforced working from home due to lockdown restrictions caused by the pandemic. Um, uh, an interesting 
point to note was that uh, the reduction of, of informal uh, meetings, you know, walking past a colleague in the staff room or bumping campus meant that it was perhaps a bit harder to bounce ideas off other people and, and just share thoughts and, and ask questions on a more informal basis. Um, I mean, there was quite a nice quote from this study, which is, uh, there's no etiquette uh, yet, at least, arguably, uh, for a virtual tap on the shoulder. And I think these are, are some issues which, which we certainly encountered, at least in the earlier parts of, of the online provision this summer. And uh, those are, are some issues which we tried to tackle. So I think Jake's going to talk about some of the successes of, of the, the meetings that we had this summer, the virtual meetings in CPD. Yeah, so, so as Adam mentioned, um, be because there aren't those opportunities to share ideas informally, what we wanted to do with our weekly meetings was, was build in the opportunity to share ideas and, and run almost mini CPD sessions in our weekly language support teachers meeting. Um, we also found that, you know, there, there could be a sense of Zoom fatigue. You know, you spend a lot of time on Zoom and there's a lot, lot of different meetings to attend throughout the week. And, you know, if meetings weren't seen to have a clear purpose, then, you know, some teachers might have resented the fact they had to attend. So we were very, you know, we, we spent a lot of time to think, well, what's the purpose of this meeting? What are we hoping to get out of it? And sometimes we would even include, you know, something like building team morale as a purpose for the meeting. So we, we felt this is, you know, this is important to work together, um, even though we're isolated in our homes. Uh, and, and one thing we wanted to do was kind of delegate responsibilities within those meetings. So it wasn't just Anne and I as the coordinators leading. And we'd call on a range of people to give updates, suggestions, and to, to give it that kind of more collaborative feel. We'd also use breakout rooms, you know, because in a meeting that had 30, 35 teachers, perhaps, you know, it's difficult to, to, to have a big discussion with everyone. So we, we put people into breakout rooms and then come back and, you know, share in the main room, similar to how we did with the students, really. Um, giving just different responsibilities to members of the team, like asking someone to take the minutes and disseminate these afterwards, I think. It, it, it made them more invested in the success of these meetings when you know, they had a personal stake and that they had some responsibility. So we're all trying to ensure that they ran smoothly and, and they went well. Um, we then, like I said, we, we try to allow the second half of the meeting, so the hourly meeting, but the second 30 minutes for this kind of mini CPD session. And we'd encourage a different LST each week to lead this. And it gave the LSTs that opportunity as well uh, to, to, you know, lead a, a, a CPD session. Another thing that was quite important, I feel, was, was using a bit of humour, trying to create a relaxed, supportive atmosphere, because there's certain, you know, times where you, you're a bit stressed out and, you know, meetings on Zoom can, can be difficult sometimes. So it's important to try to create this uh, supportive, relaxed environment. Um, and, and one thing that I was quite pleased to see in, in the feedback was that 62% of the LSTs had rated our weekly meetings as being extremely useful. So I thought, well, that's a real success given that the challenges of, of, of running coordination meetings on the you know, online environment. And here are some of the quotes that I quite liked uh, that, that uh, some of the LSTs wrote and I've included here for you to read. So, for someone, it was literally the highlight of their week, apparently. And then, um, <clears throat> and then they've also mentioned that they enjoyed these mini CPD sessions that I, I was really pleased to see. Here, th this one, someone's d definitely their favorite of all meetings. So we've got that in big letters there. Another success I feel that we had with the language support team this year was with the observation process. Um, because we're online, there's the opportunity to record the observation rather than doing them live. And what we said to the LSTs was that, you know, don't feel that it's all, it's all or nothing. It's all about one observation. So I would say to anyone I was observing, look, record a bunch of different sessions. And then when you've got one that you're happy with or you feel, oh, I want some feedback on, you know, send me the link to the recording 
I'll watch it and then we'll have that chat afterwards. And I feel this, you know, gives more opportunity for, for self-reflection and actually there's more benefit rather than it being all or nothing on one observation throughout the summer. Um, and the other advantages of this is that we created a space online for teachers to upload their videos and it's much easier to then do peer observations uh, because you can do them in your own time and watch them on one and a half speed if you like or fast forward bits or rewind or pause and even for, for, for me being able to do that take notes as well was much easier um, and hopefully we try to reduce some of this stigma around observations by saying well look you know to upload notes sometimes things go wrong if it goes wrong just delete that one try it again I also uploaded a video of myself teaching a student Hopefully that's, you know, if, if the people I'm observing are able to observe me as well, we can have, you know, conversations about what works, what doesn't work in this environment, and just try and, you know, reduce this stigma and make observations a more supportive and developmental process. And um, from the results, even though LSTs were given the option of, of recording or, or having it live, the vast majority chose to go with this recording option and most of the, the, the LSTs found this either extremely useful or at least slightly useful. So that was a positive uh, piece of feedback as well. And here are some of the uh, quotes, again, that I've, I've just written, I've recorded here for you. So some, some of these words here, unobtrusive, constructive, encouraging, useful, helpful, you know, because it is, it was definitely a difficult summer but being online in the new context and, and we felt you know that kind of supportive collaborative and encouraging approach was really useful um, this this longer quote here I, I think is brilliant I think we should probably use this on our promotional material because you know, very very beautifully written I thought Okay, so in the next section, we're just going to highlight some of the challenges that emerged this year and how we addressed them at the time and how we might also address them in the future. So Adam's just going to tell us about this survey. Uh, yeah, so a survey of 100 uh, online teachers in higher education um, noted that some, some major causes of stress um, included time constraints, tech problems and also uh, very, very large class sizes. And I think these three issues are, are, are things which to some degree caused stress or at least posed a challenge to, to, to us this summer, um, no doubt to, to many others as well. Um, what we're going to do is, is look at just three or four more specific challenges um, that we found, we encountered this summer in relation to the language support team. So Ali's going to talk about these first two issues, uh, the role of the LST and how to make the most of it in class. Yeah, so one of the main challenges that we experienced in one way or another, both from language support perspective and the class teachers, was defining their role when in the class and providing that in-class support and ultimately how we can build and support this class teacher LST relationship. Um, then related to this was how we can really make the most of having that person in the class with you. Uh, because in theory, the idea of a class teacher um, or having another class teacher with you in your in your zoom room um, for a few hours each week seems quite simple and hopefully quite helpful but the challenge arose when both parties or one of the people maybe didn't make their expectations clear or that was not clearly established at the beginning and so that affected the working dynamic um, as a result um, so to try and address this at the time adam and i created a cpd session on this topic and we gave this during the induction of new teachers on the later courses and we also recorded this so that they could refer back to it um, but it included a case study with an example timeline of how a class teacher and LST might communicate with each other um, and work collaboratively together um, but it included some 
problems, some obstacles, or maybe some situations that were handled not in the best way or could have been clearer. And we encouraged people to reflect how this could have been handled better or been more communicative. Um, and then we also had a forum that people could post on. They could post queries, challenges in the open, just other people were probably going through the same thing. So that was a good space to have that air cleared uh, with each other. Um, yeah, the other challenge that LSTs faced was how to make the most of a one-to-one -one session in just 25 minutes. Um, and Adam is going to talk more about this now. Yeah, so uh, I mean, last year on the, the pre-session on campus, the one-to-one the -one sessions we provided were sort of 50 minutes to an hour. So for a lot of returning LSTs this year, suddenly facing the prospect of having a one-to-one, -one, which is only 25 minutes, sounded quite daunting at first. And uh, I think uh, many LSTs, myself included, found that if you're not careful, suddenly your preparation time could almost become as long as the one-to-one -one itself, which, you know, with other responsibilities just, just isn't feasible, especially on, on a long-term basis, working on a pre-sessional for, for four or five months. So I know that one thing that many of, of uh, myself and the other language support teachers uh, did this summer is with these one-to-ones we tried to take more of a task-based approach so I think Ali touched on this a little bit earlier to be fair rather than saying to the student okay at the end of our five 25-minute sessions you will have improved your sentence stress and intonation and having a goal which you know might be quite worthy at its core but is perhaps a bit abstract and a bit hard to gauge what we instead is set a very specific detailed task at the start so at the end of this course of one-to-one -one support you will give a short presentation on this topic a short spoken presentation and through doing that you will use various techniques in various language or maybe at the end of this course of language support you will have written uh, an introductory paragraph in response to this essay question and so once we had established that in session number one, which could easily take 25 minutes meeting the student and, and setting that task. Um, then the, the rest of the sessions, perhaps drawing parallels to the, the flipped learning approach, what the student would do is work on their, their task or their goal, for example, work on their paragraph for homework. And then in the next one-to-one -one session, they would share that with me or with Ali or a language support teacher and actually that was probably more easily facilitated uh, in the online environment this year with the share screen feature on Zoom. It was quite helpful to, to either send that in the chat box for, for, you know, for editing purposes or to share the screen and we'd, we'd look at it and we'd talk about it and suddenly 25 minutes of focusing on one paragraph suddenly seemed uh, you know a bit more feasible and, and, and was hopefully well received by the students and yeah there's a few bullet points on the screen there but hopefully helped to, to promote their autonomy a little bit as well so the one-to-ones were a case of supplying language where there were gaps and directing the students to resources and websites and then encouraging them to to, to work on that task in their own time uh, i think a final challenge um, uh, relates to the enrichment hour so we've already talked about the the peak number of students being around 150. Uh, so how, how did we manage that and how did we work it? Yeah, so, so this, uh, I mean, it's, it was difficult. Um, to, to just having the confidence and authority to address a room of 150 students is, is, is quite daunting and quite challenging for a lot of people. And, and you're knowing what activities are going to work in breakout rooms and, and you know, it was all a bit of a kind of trial and error as well. For, for us, we were learnt throughout the summer. But what we did do is, is we produced uh, a guide in the early stages at the 20 and 15 week stages of the course. We produced this guide so then the, the people coming in for the shorter courses, the 10 and six week courses, were able to kind of hit the ground running and they could see, you know, what worked. And we produced this detailed guidelines on what they needed to do and um, you know some sort of tips on timings and the sort of activities that would work we also when we created the schedule of, of the enrichment hour so we gave different LSTs the opportunity to lead these but 
every day they were attending in a supportive role. So every day they're getting the opportunity to kind of observe their peers leading. But we also, in the, the planning and the preparation, enlisted the support of our CPD team. So very experienced teachers would work with them and hopefully give them the confidence to lead these sessions and run really successful uh, you know, daily workshops and activities. Okay, so we, we've come to the end of, of outlining our, our language support provision there. There's a, a lot of information I think that we've, we've thrown at you, but the, the, the key things that I think we'd like to just recap are the one that this language support role and this, this you know, language support team, we, we feel really enriches the experience for both teachers and students on the pre-sessional. And you know, we'd recommend it to other universities if you don't have a, a similar role. Um, we also think that, you know, perhaps more importantly, even th than in other years now with the online environment, fostering this collective team approach is really, really useful. Um, and, and from a coordination uh, perspective, seeking to empower individuals in the team and delegate responsibilities and, you know, getting two of them to come and present a, a conference with you, you know, these kind of things were so useful, so helpful for us as coordinators that we were able to give different responsibilities to different members of our team. And it just really, I think, helped them feel more invested in the success of our program. And so there's kind of a bit of a LST pride thing, hopefully going on. Um, the, the other key point, I think, is in how we've used technology to improve both observations and CPDs. The, the opportunity to record and upload your observations and do many more peer observations and you know, be able to stop and rewind and play and record these things and, and chat about them afterwards. There's a lot of possibilities here for how we can, you know, to learn from each other and see what approaches work. And hopefully that's one good thing that can come out of this move to an online teaching environment. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, here are our references. I think we've got some time for uh, any questions if people have any. Hey, thank you very much, Jake, Adam, Alison. That was absolutely fantastic. I thoroughly enjoyed listening to that. Really, really insightful. And um, I mean, the, the key word, I guess, with that presentation is support. And it, it was so interesting to hear how the LSTs provided not only support for students, but for, for tutors as well. Um, I found it interesting that LSTs would be expected to join certain classes for 25 minutes or so um, to offer help in class and I think that's that's in one way that's a really great thing because particularly as a lot of people are you know we've, we've started teaching online for the first time in this way um they're sort of going into the class thinking I've never done this before you know to have somebody kind of come in and hold your hand a little bit or give you a bit of support I think is a really really good thing I was just going to ask though if you if you do have LSTs joining classes does that cause any issues at all? Does it cause any kind of performance anxiety or stress on, on the half of the, um, the, the, the teacher? I, I think that was the most difficult thing for us because that's not something that we've done uh, before because usually the LSTs have, have been seeing students independently of the <laughs> actual class time, but we did feel there's a lot of benefit with having them go into class. But yeah, that was the difficult thing to manage because there was some, some resistance to it and there were certain teachers, yeah, I, I don't want another teacher. They almost felt under pressure like someone's observing them, even though it's supposed to be a supportive team teaching approach. Um, so it did definitely depend on individuals. One thing that we did to address that was, was to run this CPD session that Adam and Ali prepared and they talked about their own experiences and what had worked and what hadn't worked. And I think, yeah, I think it was definitely a, a tricky thing to implement at the beginning, uh, but hopefully by the end, people established good working relationships together. There were a few occasions where we had to stage interventions and move people around, but sure. hopefully it worked fairly well. And, and the feedback that you saw from that survey said about 75% or so said, you know, this worked really well and they would like to have it again next year, even if we moved to a you know, classroom setting. So I think it has been a success. It was, de it was difficult, uh, but I think it was worthwhile doing. Yeah, I, th I think there's a lot that we can all learn from, from that, to be honest. And, and I noticed in the chat box that the enrichment hour idea 
has created a bit of a stir as well. That that sounded really, really good to me. And, and the fact that you had like quite a range of different topics and different foci that, that the students would focus on e on each day. And, and I think um, one of the things that we worry about so much is creating that sense of, um, you know, sort of social cohesion community, um, because obviously we're in a, in a different space. And I think that's such a great way to get people engaged and, you know, meeting different people on the course and, and stuff like that. So I thought that was really interesting. So let's just have a little look at some of the questions that are popping up in the chat box. Um, let's have a look. Uh, okay, so Charlene Earle is asking, does your ratio of LSTs per teacher for online delivery differ for face-to-face -face delivery? Uh, well, this is the first time that we, we've done it in that way. So when we did face-to-face, -face, um, the, the way language, uh, so the, the class teachers would refer students um, that they felt needed additional support, and that could be picked up by any LST. So there wasn't that relationship between the class teacher and LST. And that's another reason why we felt like having you know, one LST support, three teachers go into their class, build better relationships with them. They can work together to diagnose the, the students who, who have weaknesses and um, yeah, so, so we didn't actually have that before. So that is a new thing that's only mm. happened with the online delivery. But I think we would continue it next year, even if we move back to online, uh, back to um, on campus. Sure. OK. And, and yeah, as you just mentioned, um, having LSTs join classes, if there are particular students that a, a tutor has flagged as being maybe a bit weak or needing extra support, then having that second pair of eyes observe that themselves, I guess, is, is also a, a very useful thing to have. Um, let's just see what else we've got here. Um, lots of comments of um, praise and, and support. That's good. Uh, yeah, M more comments of praise than questions. Uh, here we go. So there's one from Sue who's asking, how do you recruit LSTs? Uh, what, quest, what kind of qualifications would they need to have? Well, typically um, LSTs don't need to be TEFL Q because they're not um, given their own class. So we, we ha tend to be, it tends to be LSTs are, are people working towards that TEFL Q status. Um, uh, and, and so, or, or it could be people that favor a part, you know, can only work part time or even if they have like a two week holiday booked in August or something that they can't get out of, then it's like, oh, well, you yeah. can join our LST team. So there's certain people that um, Anna and myself are, you know, really, really keen to retain. And, and sometimes it might be like uh, school teachers who, who are, you know, they're, they're teaching in the school and they only can come for a few weeks. And so they just want, you know, a, a less intense so maybe they're only doing three days a week something like that so it, it's it's a much more of a flexible position because you don't have to be there every day for a certain amount of time um, sure. so, the, it, so so there are some people who, who it, it suits their uh, you know their life if they have other responsibilities childcare issues that kind of thing uh, but it also allows us to get uh, teachers in who aren't necessarily TEFL Q because the British Council requires that you know class teachers all technically should have that TEFL Q status um, so yeah so that it, it, it's a it's a mixed bag of different people we get but we tend to get lots of kind of younger early earlier career uh, people who are working towards those qualifications and I think it's a really great learning ground because you get to kind of work and share ideas and and observe and, and do all of these things as well hopefully Sounds yeah, yeah, that sounds really good. If anyone um, wants to come and apply, then please, please do, because we always really want, like, you know, people to, co to come and work with us, and we, we well, want to create, like, a, you know, a, a team of dynamic people who, who are really interested and engaged, and, and that's why we put such an emphasis on CPD. We have a designated uh, CPD team at, at the BIA, and, and so that's, you know, one of our selling points, I think, if, yeah, to see if we can recruit a few people. <laughs> Sure, sure. I, I mean, I was going to say, um, I think having a good CPD program is also a, a really, um, it adds a lot of value, I think, to the, the summer pre-sessional courses. 
we, we did a CPD um, program as well at Nottingham. We, we had two or three concurrent CPD sessions running each Wednesday. And I think that really added a lot of value um, to the course. I'd be interested to know what, what kind of CPD programs or, or sessions did you run? Uh, well, I'll, I'll let uh, Adam perhaps uh, answer that because you were involved in a few of the CPD activities, weren't you? Yeah, so I think Ali mentioned a little earlier the, the CPD session, which she and I ran together um, to sort of hopefully provide a guideline. We, we created like an example case study of a, an LST and a teacher, um, which we, we supplied in a, you know, in a Zoom session. And, and ran a CPD session based on this case study to try and sort of uh, pick out any challenges or, or working relationship problems that might occur in the pre-sessional. So that was one CPD session which we ran. I also uh, gave a, a, a sort of 30, well, 20 to 30 minute talk at the Birmingham International Academy's online conference, which was of course online this summer, like everything else. And uh, again, um, my, my talk was based on the LST role and I, I gave a talk about how to structure uh, and prepare a short course of one-to-ones. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, I the, the CPD was, was really varied this summer, wasn't it, Jake? And actually it was really good that the mini CPD we had yeah, in yeah, so, the LST sessions were, were really useful as well. So, so we have a designated CPD in, in addition to the language support team and, and they run sessions every Wednesday afternoon that are open to all the pre-sessional teachers. But then we yeah, developed our own sort of mini LST CPD every Tuesday that we would do in our LST meeting. I think, Ali, you, you led one of those, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were basically just um, we presented on things that might have arisen during our discussion. So if by having our LST meeting, we were obviously able to talk more specifically about our role and then any issues that people were having. So the one I did was about making the most of a 25 minute session because a few people had said, you know, how, how can we get enough done in that time? Like how do we effectively do a 25 minute session? So we just did mini CPDs based on things that arose like that. And it was, it was really nice to have a different person every week because it basically gave them a platform to talk about something they actually really engage with and share it with us. So it wasn't just one team preparing something every week that you may already know, or you may not necessarily engage that much with. It was very specific to something that we wanted to improve on. So it was really nice just to be able to share that with each other and give everyone an equal stage, if you like. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so it's about 20 past three at the moment. There's just, I'll just ask one or two more questions and then maybe we could have like a, a five minute quick tea break or something before the final presentation. Um, so just having a little look here. Um, where are we? Okay, so Brenda Allen is saying, from your observations, what key qualities emerged in teachers who had made the transition to delivering successfully online? Well, with our observations, they mostly take place in a one-to-one -one setting. So because, because the, the kind of big chunk of the LST role is delivering support, you know, in one-to-one -one or small group sessions, it's 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 um, yeah the, the majority of them are, are one to ones and I think the most successful ones are are ones which take a kind of uh, I think as Adam alluded to it, to kind of encourage that student autonomy to to adopt something of a, a kind of a coaching approach and you yeah. know asking the questions to the students well, well how can you work on this and what are you going to do and setting those targets as Ali mentioned so you know but but getting the students to recognise that. Uh, you know, they have to do a lot of the work in their own time. And it's about encouraging them to become independent learners. So for me, when I was doing the observations and I saw that kind of reflective dialogue, you know, teachers asking students, what have you done this week? Has that been successful? Are you going to continue that? What can you, what else could you do? Just reflecting those questions back at the students, I think, worked really well and and when I saw those in an observation I'd think oh that's brilliant and then I'd often say oh you know for example oh have you watched uh, Amy's video she's fantastic oh she's hers is shared on the peer observations folder why don't you watch Amy because she does a, a really good way of 
eliciting goals from the students. And because I'd seen many of them, I could recommend different ones to different people because maybe someone was you know, struggling with uh, setting homework or something. Oh, have you seen uh, the way Heather does that? Oh, it's really good. You, you should watch Heather's video. So something like that was, was also really good directing people where they might do a peer observation. That's really, really interesting. Fantastic stuff. Well, thank you again, Jake, Adam and Alison. Absolutely brilliant. Thoroughly enjoyed that. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Okay. So we've got about nine minutes until the next presentation. 